Okay, now we're in chapter two. Uh, in this video, I will show you how I selectively um, denoise um, parts of uh, this image, especially in the dark parts and also in the uh, lighter parts. Um, like I said, in the first chapter, I shot it with a higher ISO and I also had to increase the brightness a bit since I wanted to keep the water motion. So I have to make some selectively some selective adjustments to get rid of the noise, but that's no problem. I will show you my techniques in Photoshop and I will also show you real quick how I remove some annoying parts of the image, but that's not a big deal. Like I said, this chapter mainly focuses on removing noise and to get started, I will show you my first trick I always do. And I do this by right clicking and then I go to edit in and then I open this file as a smart object in Photoshop. The reason is um, when I do that, I always have the possibility to go back to my previous uh, raw adjustments. That's a cool thing. And the second benefit of this um, smart object is when I use a, another filter, let's say a Nick collection filter or some sharpening filters, they all apply directly to the pixel based layer and then I can't readjust them. I can only work with the opacity and add a layer mask, but I can't go back to the filter. And the smart object helps me to go back there. So especially at the beginning when you're not sure what you're exactly doing with this filter and you want to have the opportunity to readjust it, just use this. In this case, I use it for my um, raw adjustments. So when I double click here, then you see I get back to the raw filter and I have all my adjustments I made previously. That's a cool thing because I could of course also make a different. I can go to filter and camera raw filter. I have this opportunity in um, Adobe Photoshop CC but then I don't get my previous adjustments and I don't have a true white balance. I have a yeah, cooling or warming filter thing, but it's not with Kelvin. But in this case, it doesn't matter. I just want to have um, the flexibility to readjust my settings from before. So that's the reason why I did it. But I don't want to do it on the base layer since when I make adjustments there, I yeah, will have problems to go back and um, do something yeah, something uh, different. In this case, I want to uh, make a copy by pressing Ctrl J and then I will flatten the base layer. The reason, oops, I'm sorry, Ctrl C. Uh, rasterize, oh, that's the, that's what it called, yeah, rasterize. That means I remove the smart object on the base layer. Now I only have it on the top layer, but that's okay. It's an exact copy of the base layer. So right now it doesn't have any, it doesn't make any difference by turning it on and off. But now I can work with this one without affecting the one below. And now I will um, apply some um, noise removal. And to do this, I will double click on it again. And there it gives me my raw adjustments. And now I will click on detail and here I can increase the luminance. I already applied something in, in, in Lightroom, but I want to do more and I want to use it selectively. To do this, I will first of all increase it here. Okay, and I will press okay. The good thing, like I said before, I can always go back and readjust it. I'll just quickly show you, double clicking again. Yeah, sorry for the beat noise. And here on detail, you see it. Ah, yes, it gives me the option to readjust it. That's a cool thing. Um, since I have a copy, the adjustment only is applied to the copy here. I will show you by zooming in. When I turn it on and off, you see, oh yeah, I lose noise, that's good, but I also lose a lot of details since I applied it on the whole image. I don't want this, and that's the reason why I want to work selectively. And the best way to do this is using a luminosity mask. In my previous um, video, the post-processing tutorial um, volume one, I already already showed you uh, in detail how I use my uh, luminosity masks. 
and I of course will also show you how I apply them to this image. But in this case right now, I won't go into much details since I only want to use it for noise, noise removal. So I will just quickly show you how I uh, create this mask and how I use it for this purpose. Um, to get the mask, I have to go to the RGB channel, uh, to the RGB channel, um, because it's always based on the tonality of an image. It's not based on colors or anything. It's based on the, it can be on colors, but in this case, I want it to be based on the tonality. And that's the reason why I first have to go to the RGB channel. And to get the first luminosity selection, I will quickly show you. I will just control click on the channel. And here you see at the marching ants uh, selecting something, but it doesn't really tell me much. So I have to save this selection. To do this, I will just click on this button here. And now you see the luminosity mask. That's what I was talking about before. Um, when I uh, look at the mask, you see that it's a really smooth transition. It has really smooth transitions and a lot of gray tones. That means all the light tones are selected and the darker they get, the less are they selected, you know? And in this case, I have a lot of gray ones, like I said, so it's a really smooth mask. I have just a little bit of the adjustment happening, um, of the selective, of the selection, sorry, happening in the gray tones and less in the dark tones. And that's the cool thing about this mask. So I don't get weird edges or transitions when I make um, adjustments. In this case, I don't want the lighter parts. I want the darker parts. I want to selectively remove noise in the dark parts of the image because that's usually the parts with the most noise in it. And um, when I do this, I don't lose the details in the midtones on and in some lighter tones. And I want to keep them there. To get the dark tones, I have to invert this mask. To do this, I will control click on the channel I just saved. And then I press uh, control shift I for invert. Oops, my bad, again, control shift I for invert. And now I can save it. And I press control D, I remove the selection. And now you can see it's a different story. Here you see the complete opposite. I have a lot of dark tones selected and lesser light tones. There are also some gray tones in it. That means when I make adjustments, it also affects this, these parts here, but less than the white parts. But I want to shrink it down since I want a um, more precise selection. And to do this, I will again control click on this channel now. And now I will control alt shift click. And there you see this X here. That means I'm shrinking it down. I will click on it. I can save it. And here you see, okay, yeah, it has um, the darker tones selected. Uh, much less of the water here since it's not as dark as the forest. Uh, here you see the difference, but I want it even um, more detailed. So I will control alt shift click on it again. And again, I can do it a couple times. I can re-click and when I click on it, there you see, ah, okay. Now I have a selection of the really dark tones. I can maybe even shrink it down a bit more just to see the difference. Control alt shift click, save, control D to remove. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I even like this better because it doesn't select too much. So I don't uh, lose details in that many parts of the image. So yeah, I will use this. I will control click on it. Now I pick the foreground color here to black. I can just press X so it switches to black. And now I can add, oh, sorry, my bad. I want it on white because I want to be I want the dark parts to be selected. So white color means selection happens, black color means no selection. So now I have it on white and now I add a layer mask by just pressing this button here on the bottom. And there you see, when I alt click on the mask, I have the selection from before, dark parts are selected, uh, white parts are selected, dark parts are non not selected. And that's a good thing. When I zoom in, let's say uh, here, and when I uh, turn the mask on and off, there you see the difference. Uh -huh. Before I removed noise everywhere and now only in the darker parts. 
and when I turn off the layer completely, I see in the really dark tones, uh, okay, there's less noise. Not much though. It, it's, uh, it adds up in my opinion, because when you print really, really big, then you of course will see it. And when you remove it at the beginning, you won't increase it further with um, other adjustments. Yeah, here I see it really good. Here in the branches. I hope it can be seen in the video, but here on my screen, yeah, it will be good. And when you try it at home, on your pictures, you will also see the difference, of course. I could have picked this mask to have more um, noise removal, but I, I think I'm fine with this one. And what I can also do now is I can just go back to um, the raw filter and I can further increase the luminosity, uh, the luminance noise uh, reduction. Let's say I want to use 50, press OK. And now when I, and it's first, uh, get the process done. Okay, and now when I zoom in and I turn it on and off, yeah, I see it even better, but it really keeps the details in the midtones and that's what I wanted. When I turn off the mask, I see the difference. Yeah, I lose a lot of the detail. Of course, I also remove more noise, but it's always a balance act in my opinion. It's a, you have to keep some details because otherwise it will look washed out. And at the same time, you want to remove noise, otherwise it looks too noisy. So in this case, it's a good middle path in my opinion. But what I also want to do is I want to remove some noise in the water because it also got a bit noisy in my opinion, not as much as the shadows, but still. And to do this, I can just use a, another luminosity mask and I can um, add it to this mask, which I already um, created. But first of all, let me delete those channels. I don't need them because they only make the file bigger and that slows down the process. To do this, I just click on it and then I click on the trash can here and then I remove it and I want to keep the light one the light mask from um, the beginning and I want to shrink it down a bit more because I only want to affect the water a bit to do this I first of all control click on it and then I control alt shift click to get it a bit more precise I control D to deselect and then I see yeah that's what I wanted I wanted to pick the water and what I do now is I will um, control click to get the selection really smooth and nice. And I want the foreground color here to white on the left side. And then I click on this mask and I will alt backspace and then it will add it to the previous mask. I will show you alt backspace and boom, there it is. When I alt click on the mask, you see it. Okay, now it, it's added together. And now I have uh, noise removal happening in the dark tones and also in some of the lighter tones. And that's what I exactly wanted. And when I check out the water, yep, nice and smooth and not too much details lost, but also some noise removal. Perfect. When I turn off the mask, you see the difference. Yeah, really milky, but in this case, I keep the details. Perfect. Good. Yeah, that was my main let's say technique to selectively remove noise. So luminosity masks can not only be used for color and contrast adjustments, they can also be used for sharpening adjustments and noise removal. So now I don't need this layer anymore, so I will flatten the whole image. Perfect. You can also delete those channels to not get the file too big. And now I will, like I said before, I will um, remove some annoying parts here and that's actually not much just this um, red stick here and some red colors here on the on the rock I don't know why they're there but they're annoying so I will remove them I won't do it on the background layer so I make a copy Control J perfect and I have two main techniques to do this there's nothing fancy about it but I yeah I will still show you the first thing is I will use the lasso tool and I will um, draw around this to, to get to the lasso tool. It's here on the left top, or you can just press L and then you have it. So I will draw around here to have a selection. doesn't have to be too precise. That's good. I do it with a Wacom tablet. I can highly recommend this because you can work really um, um, yeah, precise with this, with this um, pen. 
I use it for like one and a half years now and I enjoy it. I, I, it's what, much easier to make selections, to use dodge and burn and s some other things. It's really um, made my processing a lot easier. So I, like I said, I can highly recommend it. Uh, and the next thing now is I want to fill this selection with some p um, parts uh, around it. To do this, I go to edit fill and there you see the option um, not foreground color I want content aware and and color adoption that means it will pick some content around it and some color around it and it will fill this selection with it and now I press OK so you see it it doesn't always work of course sometimes it has to be redone sometimes but in some simple ways like this it's a really good option I have a um, action for it because then it makes my life easier to create an action I just go to the play button here and then I click on this um, option button here on the right top and there it says new action and then I can name the action and I can also pick a function key in this case case I have F3 so it goes faster but of course you don't have to pick one and then you just click on record and now you will just do uh, what I just did and it will record this process and when you're done you can just click on the stop button here and then you have um, the selection here in your menu bar in this case it's called content aware fill and then you can use it all the time with just a simple button click and uh, yeah that helps to speed up the workflow okay I will redo it a couple times because it left some parts here and I will just now press F3 and there you see uh -huh, I'm done here's also something red I don't like it and also here it doesn't have to be too detailed because it's a really small part of the image but removing the red thing helps okay that looks good and when I want to get some back some detail here in the grass I can use um, the stamp tool by pressing ctrl s I can go down with the opacity a bit you see when I go here to opacity I, can, I get these arrows and then I can slide it and I will go to like 81 or something and some other cool trick here is to um, adjust the size of the brush um, you don't have to press plus and minus or go to the menu here all the time you can just um, hold down alt and right click and when you go to the right it increases the size and when you go to the left it decreases the size and at the same time you can work with the hardness when you go up it, you get a softer brush and when you go down you get a harder brush and it really makes your life easier and you, like I said it speeds up your workflow get used to it you will love it okay now I will sample something from here and I try to get it there I will just press alt here and then I will just do it. yeah that's already okay some small adjustment doesn't have to be big because like I said it's a really small part of the image here you see it the red is gone and that was the main reason not really complex and at the bottom uh, at the top sorry here there was some guy here uh, watching the beautiful waterfall and he had a red jacket on which is also annoying so I will remove it by pressing L again drawing around it okay pressing F3 oh, okay not completely gone when I print big I would see it yeah that's okay perfect that's it so far for this chapter like I said the main part was removing noise this was just some small little um, trick here with the stamping but in this case I'm satisfied I removed noise in the dark parts and also in the brighter parts so I can now flatten the image and um, start with my other adjustments in the next chapter um, I will show you how I further enhance the mood in my image especially using creating some dreamy look since it was in the forest with some evening light happening I uh, like to get this yeah misty feeling back and how I do this will be um, seen in the next video like I said so see you there